Welcome back to another day on the Kentucky Adventure Tour. Today we're tackling around 60 miles of trail between Rogers and Eve Hollow while looking out for those wild horses in the area. So stick around and join us for the ride. You might notice that this is not exactly the kind of weather that you really want to go overlanding in, especially when your heater core is plugged, but well, it was a three-day weekend, so there we were, out in the storm, headed south, even though the interstates were getting closed. We stayed with Bill's daughter Taylor the first night, and our trailer took on a little bit of ice. We knew we still had a four-hour drive to reach our starting point, so we weren't too worried about that ice. Besides, the sun was supposed to come out, it was supposed to clear up, and maybe some of that snow would melt away. We also assumed that in driving over 200 miles to the south, that we would be finding warmer temperatures. Some days you just have to accept the fact that some of those assumptions are going to turn out to be wrong. Not only was it just as cold and snowy down in Kentucky as it had been up in Ohio, I think it might have been colder. And with the heater core and the Jeep plugged, well, we weren't exactly nice and toasty. But gosh, does that snow make for some beautiful pictures. The last time we were at Callie's campground in the Red River Gorge, we had ended the Kentucky Adventure Tour near Rogers on the Big Andy Ridge. We did make a couple of wrong turns on the way based on some old cat maps, so make sure you have the most up-to-date map with you. But eventually we found our way into the countryside on the Kentucky Adventure Tour, headed into the woods. And soon after, we finally found ourselves on the kind of trail that we enjoy most on the cat. Dirt. I had actually been looking forward to driving through this dirt section on the Kentucky Adventure Tour. Why? Well, that's because there are nine counties in Kentucky that have free roaming horses, and this area is one of them. Kentucky estimates that there are about 500 free roaming horses in the area, but don't think that means you can just drive down there, go out, pick one out, and take it home. It's just like those free roaming cows that sometimes you'll come across. You don't really think you can take them home. And the same thing applies to the horses you'll find in this area. Many of them are owned by locals. There are a couple of organizations that make sure that they drop hay and bring other food out for the horses, especially in the winter. And as an individual traveling through this area, you're also more than welcome to bring out healthy snacks for those animals. Breathitt County, Kentucky is well known for its coal and timber resources. And when you drive through this particular area, you're going to see part of that coal mining history in action, because this is reclaimed coal mine territory. From above, this area is a maze of old tracks and trails, many of them continually used till today. I really can't stress enough that it's so important that you have basic navigation skills and a copy of the latest Kentucky Adventure Tour map when you travel through this area. Otherwise, you're bound to take a lot of side trails and spend a lot of time lost. Even with a current map and good navigation skills, Sometimes it's very easy to get lured into the siren song of some of those wider side tracks, like this one. That right hand track here, it just looked so much more prominent and more used than the left, but we had to stop because we looked at the map again and realized this was not going in the direction we needed to go. And so we backed up and got back on track.
If you'd like to avoid pinstriping, this is not the trail for you. In fact, I'm not sure if we would have chosen to go this route if we'd realized how much brush was going to be scratching up against the Jeep. And we were starting to wonder whether we were going to find any of those free-roaming horses at all on this trail. But at this point, we were committed to finish this track through to our evening destination. Thankfully, all of these deep and long mud holes that we were driving through, they had nice, solid rock bottoms, so we weren't slipping and sliding through this trail as much as we otherwise might. This track of mud holes and scratchy brush, it's not really all that long, though it certainly felt like it driving through. In fact, it probably only took us 15 to 20, maybe 25 minutes tops to drive from one side to the other. And eventually that track does widen out and the bushes back away from the trail again. At this point, we were starting to look for camp for the night, and we'd basically given up on finding any of the free-roaming horses, though we did see the occasional cow. As with a lot of things in life, sometimes when you finally give up on that hope and let it go, it miraculously appears right in front of you. This is the South Fork Elk View. We didn't get to see any elk. It was probably not a good time of year for that. But this particular area does have a nice view over the surrounding countryside. It's also a well-known area for ATV trails and horseback riding. Oh, I see them. How many are out here? At least two dozen, I'd say. Probably more. What you doing there, little one? You gonna keep us company tonight? Another really nice thing about the South Fork Elk View, it has free dispersed camping. And remember I was worried about whether we'd get to see those free roaming horses? Well, they were pretty darn curious about our camp setup and came to visit. So the more I think about it, I bet they were just hoping that we were unloading some hay. We soon had the tent up and the propane fire pit running in the gazelle to help get us warm again. When we went to start cooking dinner, we discovered one additional complication for the evening. The taps on our water tank, they never unfroze and we couldn't get any fresh water from our tank. Luckily, we still had a little water left in our water bottles and we really didn't need it to cook dinner. Besides, it gave us an excuse to not wash dishes for the evening. Instead, we both got to sit, relax, and watch the sunset as we drank our hot chocolate. Made with milk and not water, of course, since water was in short supply. And as we settled in for the night, we wondered what our adventure tomorrow would look like on the cat. Maybe it'll look a little something like this.
So make sure to come back and join us for the next trail. Thanks for watching, and in the meantime, go out and find your own adventure.